Uh, Jacob, you're up next. Uh, can you share your screen and please present your demo? And let's try and keep it to five or 10 minutes. Uh, Marco's was about 10 minutes. OK, sure. Sounds good. Can you hear me? Yep. OK, yeah. perfect. Um, so I only worked on writing the contract, so there isn't a nice, fancy front end. Sorry. Uh, yeah, that was, that was the goal. Nothing to apologize for. <laughs> so uh, I'll send the link to just the GitHub gist that I put the code on earlier today. So you can follow along and also share my screen so you can hack it. So, OK. So I wrote a contract that will support um, setting wagers on like the value of certain things, like maybe a stock or a cryptocurrency. And then um, an Oracle will update those values at a particular time. And you know whoever wins a wager at a particular time will just the winner takes all kind of. Um, yeah, so I kind of modeled this after a lot of the different near demos that I saw. Also, this is written in assembly script instead of Rust. Uh, <laughs> I'm a lot more familiar with TypeScript. I'm a web developer by day. <laughs> um, yeah, so I suppose we can go through this. Um, there is a couple things to note that these functions are not intended to be used in regular times. It's just because I messed up my storage a bunch of times. So I needed to clear it out. Um, yeah, so I suppose we can start from minting, which is down here. Uh, this follows very closely to the fungible token um, kind of idea here. As I was writing this, I was thinking it might actually be a better idea for me to like create my own separate fungible token contract and then have some inter-contract communication here, like one that manages the wagers and one that manages the currency. Um, but I didn't get around to doing that. Um, pretty much all it does is it sets the minter of the contract as the one and only Oracle who can update the values of symbols at particular times. Um, so that's kind of like an improvement that I could see for this contract is allow multiple oracles to register themselves for different symbols. So after we mint, we have our standard, you know, um, get functions, get balance for a user, get the total supply, transfer, nothing too interesting there. Um, but this is where things kind of start to get more unique under the create wager function where uh, any user can uh, create a wager for a symbol. Uh, they can choose whether they're going, well, so then they choose a value that they predict that symbol will either fall or fall below or go above. Um, that's what this Boolean flag says, is if they're betting that it goes above or below that value, um, how much they're betting that it will do that, and at what block timestamp. Um, and we have a bunch of assertions to make sure that all the values are sane. Um, we create a wager object and then update a couple of data structures with the wagers ID um, so that we can associate wagers with a user and so that we can associate wagers with a symbol. Um, so for example, a symbol would be something like BTC for Bitcoin if you're betting on the price of Bitcoin, or it could be something like um, you know, the symbol for Tesla if you're betting on the stock market. Um, okay, so then another user can accept a wager given by their ID couple of just sanity assertions here, making sure that you know you can't accept a wager that's already expired, making sure that someone else hasn't accepted the wager already and you also can't accept your own wager because that would be dumb. Um, yeah, and so then it just fills in either the over or the under field, whichever was empty with whoever's accepting the contract or whoever's accepting the uh, wager rather um, and updates a couple of those lists again. Um, you can only delete a wager if it hasn't already, or sorry, you can only rescind a wager, delete a wager, that's a helper function. So this is an actually exported function. You can only rescind a wager if um, no one's accepted it yet, um, and then it will restore your balance. By the way, so this kind of has its own fungible token uh, that is minted along with this contract, more or less. Um, so whenever you create a wager, it kind of, it takes some of that, some of your balance and ties it up in that wager. So it re removes that from your actual user balance, but the 
wager is still tied to your account ID. So you can still recover that if you rescind the wager before it's been accepted. Um, okay, and then only the Oracle is allowed to report a symbol. So for example, you're going to update the contract with the price of Bitcoin. Um, and so then you're going to get all of the wagers that are associated with the BTC symbol. Um, and then this is kind of expensive. I haven't really written many smart contracts. Writing a loop is probably going to be relatively expensive. So I'm trying to figure out if there's a better way, more optimal way to do this. Um, I didn't come up with anything. So it's just, this would just be rather expensive to run if you have a lot of uh, wagers on a particular symbol. But then it checks that the wager's time has passed and that the wager has been accepted. Then it will distribute the winnings based on the simple algorithm of <laughs> determining if the symbol value is above the value or if the symbol value is below the value and it will distribute the winnings to the under or over better accordingly. Otherwise, in the chance that there's a tie, it will just distribute them evenly. Um, uh, these again are just for debugging purposes. And then a couple of get functions for getting uh, wagers associated with an account for a symbol. These just return wager IDs. Um, and then this actually returns the details about a particular wager. Um, yeah, and that's that's pretty much it. Uh, it is deployed on testnet right now. Um, so if I have time, I could write a couple of commands in my terminal here. Uh, you do, yeah. You're just over you're just over five five minutes. So if you want to demonstrate some of the interface, that's fine. Okay, cool. So um, something I noticed is that uh, whenever I'm calling things on uh, from from testnet, it tends to time out about three times before it actually uh, works. So I, I don't know why that is. Um, so I just need to copy that. Okay, so then I want to say near call this guy get balance and my JSON will be account here and I will say this is my or no I'll do uh, that's one of my testnet accounts and we'll say account ID I believe. Hopefully I wrote that correctly. This is all very new to me, so I might be doing things. Oh, I should have said near view because then it would have been free. <laughs> um, so I think this account has around 4,000 tokens, <laughs> which is not very many because uh, the total supply is that much, which is a lot. <laughs> yeah, so it, I don't know why it, it takes forever and times out a lot, but there we go. <laughs> Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. So that's about 9,000 tokens. Um, and then I can create a wager for, um, I'll create a wager not on the Oracle account because that sounds dishonest um, here. And so then I need to put in a symbol. And I'll just have my symbol be uh, actually let's do this BTC. Um, sorry, I just need to check my arguments because I forget everything I need to put in. Okay, and then is over. We'll say true, and then value. Let's. Um, so technically, you probably want to put this in in satoshis or something. Um, I'm just going to put in a, a dummy value. So let's say the price of Bitcoin is five. Um, and I have to put that in as a string because as I discovered last night, um, that's uh, JSON doesn't support 120 bit, eight bit integers. Um, so then my bet, I'm going to bet um, 40 tokens. Oh, and that needs to be a string too. 40 tokens. And then at, I have to generate this value. Just give me one second. 
um, sign generate that by saying um, so if I give myself I have give myself two minutes here um, so at that time okay hopefully this works okay so that looks like it works now we can say um, get wagers and that will list the IDs of our wagers or no get ah, shoot I that's not the name of the function it's get wagers for account get wagers for account which is also a view call oh uh, yeah well it should be I'm just trying to <laughs> not uh, take too much time sorry um, we could get the details for that wager. Uh, technically, I suppose I have to. Oh, uh, I have to accept it too. So sorry, just a second. Yeah, that, that's okay. I, I mean, we're, we're at we're at about ten minutes, Jacob. But I mean, I'm I'm also able to verify all your transactions here on Testnet. I can see that uh, that all this is coming through, and um, and it, and it's it's. Um, it's, it's obviously making sense uh, in terms of the story that you're building. Don't feel the pressure to kind of finish out uh, the entire um, the entire narrative if you don't if you don't have to. Okay. I'm going to try and accept the wager. Hopefully, I'm still under the two minute time uh, that I gave sure. myself. Okay, so it looks like I uh, my account five .testnet has now accepted that wager, and so if I get wager, I'm just leaving this all as calls even though they should be views. Oh, well, get wager, wager ID is seven. Then we should see the over and the under are bit and five respectively. Yeah, nice. so those have been assigned. Hopefully I'm past my time now. So like the wager time has passed. Um, and let's see, I need to, Obviously a web developer because this is how I <laughs> figure out what what time it is. Um, okay, eight forty. Yeah. Okay, we're past time now, so I can report this symbol BTC report symbol. Is it report symbol? I think that's what it's called. Um, and it's going to be symbol is BTC. Yeah. And um, the value, so we're going to say the value is six. So that means that bit.testnet should win uh, 80 of my tokens. And only, only hatchet.testnet can call this because they're the oracle. So um, anyone else can't call this function. All right. So now if I say, um, get balance for bit.testnet, we should see that it is um, 40 more than uh, here. So it should be 9860. And there we go. All right, that's that's the conclusion of my demo. <laughs> that's great. Congratulations.